Welcome to the Business Owner Elevation Podcast, the show that's designed for coaches, consultants, and expert business owners that are looking to achieve higher levels of productivity and profitability, where we share battle-tested tactics and innovative ideas that guarantee to elevate your business rapidly. Brought to you from the award-winning Best UK Business Podcast in 2015. Without further ado, here's your hosts, Robert Dean Smith and Leon Street. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Business Owner Elevation Podcast. It's myself, Leon Street, in the house alongside... No other than the one and only Robert Dean Smith, the first, a.k.a. the Marty Manifesto guy from the city of a thousand trades, Birmingham, UK. Absolutely. And I'm over here from the city of maybe a few trades, not so many in Wolverhampton, <laughs> but hey, you know, we do a little bit. <laughs> but today we have an amazing guest, guys. And if you're watching this on BOE TV, you've probably seen him already sat there waiting, calm, calm and collected. And there's a reason for this. We are in the presence of royalty. Who do we have, Rob? <laughs> we, we, we have, to some, he's known as Jonathan the Producer, but he is actually the official king of podcasting, producing, and, you know, he's bringing probably some of the most A-level podcasting shows that you can go and download on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and across the podcasting universe. Because I would say that, you know, between Jonathan and listening to the ben Detto, BenSettle.com show and a few others, that's what inspired me to actually reach out to you to do a show. And I've intently uh, followed Jonathan, Ben, and some of the other shows that he produces, like the Doverman Dan, and we've had Doverman Dan on our show. Obviously, we're, we're big fans of uh, Dan. So, Dan, you know, you know which Dan I'm talking about now, Mary. our English Dan here, yeah. right? Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm just excited to have Jonathan on here. So when he agreed, you know, I was like a little girl jumping around, even though I'm a, I'm a boy, I'm a man, but I was bitching like a little girl. Uh, so I'm really because I know that he's going to bring some great value. And we know the power of either being on a podcast show, but more importantly, having a show and being able mm -hmm. to leverage it. So really, I want to, you know, hear all of the, the, the wisdom that JR, the king of podcasting, is going to bring to us today. Absolutely. Welcome to the show, Jonathan. Well, I don't, I, God, I don't have an accent. I'm not as excited <laughs> as you guys. I don't, maybe this is good. Maybe the, the, the difference will be like, uh, I don't know, yeah. something cool for the listeners, but I'm going to try to keep up with you, boys. <laughs> right? I'm going to try to keep up with you. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you for awesome. Having me on. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm just going to go into a quick bio of Jonathan, just so you guys yeah. listening right now know who he is. And as Rob said, he's known as the king of podcasting. So Jonathan Rivera comes from a blue collar background. He left the rat race to pursue real estate. He runs a successful rental business in, in only four hours a week. Today, his main focus is running the podcast factory. So it's a podcast network and production company where he's surrounded by some of the world's most respected direct response marketers. Now you've heard Rob mention a few already. And as, as far as I'm concerned, you know, this guy walks around with fellow royalty. So that's why we brought the king here today. And I already said, if you're watching this, I'm sure you've peeped the cap guys or the snapback, whatever you want to yeah, call just it. Just bring it closer, Jonathan. Just yeah. bring that branding. Just check, check the branding on there. You've got the logo. There you go, guys. You can see. <laughs> so he's got a lot of, of great stats in his bio. I'm going to read out just a couple. He's the co-host on eight podcast shows. Over mm -hmm. 1.2 million downloads. And for me, guys, that's all I need to say. <laughs> We're going to kick this interview off. We're going to get stuck in. There's a lot of exciting things I know Rob's going to get stuck into. Mm. I've already penciled a couple of questions I want to ask of Jonathan. But Rob, I'll let you kick off the show. Well, I think what will be good, as we traditionally do, and then we'll go right deep diving, because I want to call this a deep dive session where we really bring out why, why you should be podcasting, why you should be getting onto these shows why you should be doing your own shows. But I think the first thing is really just to get a little bit of, uh, of Jonathan's backstory. But more importantly, we like to kick off the show, Jonathan, with like a, a, a mantra or a quote or, or a set of principles that you work and live by. That's where we will start. And then if you want to roll into a bit of your backstory, and then we'll just slice and dice from there and, and pull out the golden nuggets. Absolutely. Glad to get started there. So my mantra is do work. <laughs> do work. <laughs> Very simple, but very difficult for a lot of people. And it's because 
So many people sit in idea mode and sit in planning mode and sit in what if mode. Mm. And I'm about Mm. doing work. Even the imperfect action will move you forward as long as you're doing it consistently. So that's my mantra. That's what I've done all my life. When I was a blue collar worker in the hot Florida sun, like it's like 95, 100 degrees. I was out there doing work because that's what I needed to do to bring in the paycheck. I showed up every day. I did what I had to do. I got my paycheck and I went home pissed off. (laughs) I hated working for the man. And so when I was ready to go out on my own, did work again. And I I created the real estate business that you talked about. It's already like 13, 14 years into that business. And the last couple of years I spent hanging out with my mentors, chatting, having cool conversations like we're about to do here. And my life is great because I do work. Good. I like that response. You know, that's just so, I want to say, that's just so direct response. Do work. I just like <laughs> two words. It's just, just killer. Absolutely killer, Jonathan. Yeah. Leon, do you want, do you, do you want to jump yeah, in and then we just yeah, roll yeah, to absolutely. the story? So based on doing work, Jonathan, what I'd love for you to do is to, to kind of just take us through really your history, like leading up to you, you know, having the podcast factory and, and becoming this, you know, a co-host of eight shows and then known as the podcast or oh, the king of podcasts now i'm gonna call you just the podcast king either one look at those guns guys <laughs> we're gonna have a show down anyway i'm gonna have to pull my top off yeah. <laughs> we'll kind of just give our listeners right now a kind of you know a potted history of of where it started leading up to what you're doing now and then we can get stuck into as rob said the deep dive because i know he's got some stuff and, and we do have we do have a name jonathan for our listeners because i know we have canine crew for you and all these others but ours is the elevation nation here <laughs> elevation nation so you all can right. the soul if you wish to <laughs> okay elevation nation that's right. all right i'm in all right so let's go back to when I was just a glimmer in my dad's eye and he met my mom. No, we're not going to go that far. Check it out. I was on Facebook the other day and you know how Facebook brings up those memories? Mm, What brought up a memory of a story where I I wrote like two or three years ago, I went to visit my grandmother and my grandmother, she has the same story that she likes to share with me now. She's 86 years old. So, you know, the stories are on repeat. And when I went to visit her, she told me the story, my entrepreneur story. And it was that I, I used to go over there every summer my parents would ship me and my brother off for two months during the summer to go to Puerto Rico because they had to work and we were on vacation and there was nobody to take care of us so they'd send us over to grandma's Mm -hmm. and she loves to tell the story of when I came over with two suitcases and what's a little kid need two suitcases for suitcase number one clothing underwear stuff you need suitcase number two all of my toys what? All of them. what? Why are I mean? Can you not find something else to do? It wasn't so that I can entertain myself. For some reason, I decided to sell all my toys. Right, and I, wow. I had a garage sale in front of Grandma's house. Put a table out. Had all the toys there. And this is where the new details came into the story. I realized that I've been doing this for many years, but I I, I underpriced myself too often. <laughs> Apparently, I sold all my toys for a nickel each. Didn't matter. I was getting money. And so I was also helping my parents out by not having all that stuff over there. But that wasn't enough for me. There was kids coming out from all around the neighborhood. Some were Puerto Rico's hot. They're walking from a block, two blocks away. They're sweating. And I have some Tang or some Kool-Aid, some powdered drink. I start making those, right? I start making a batch of those. And now I'm selling toys for a nickel, cups of Kool-Aid for a nickel, right? So this is where uh, people may have or may not have noticed that I was going to be an entrepreneur. I didn't realize it at the time, but every time I talked to grandma, I realized it was in my DNA and it just took me longer than maybe it takes some other people to realize that. So what I did was straight out of high school, I got a trade. I was an electrician. I helped build Universal Studios. I worked at Walt Disney over here at Epcot, boiling hot Florida sun, showing up to work every day, had a journeyman. This is the way it works in skilled trades is you come in new, And they pair you up with a journeyman, someone who's experienced. And what that journeyman's job is to do is to get you learning, progressing, and moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Mentorship. And so I I did everything the guy taught me. I learned everything. I wanted to work. I wanted to take over. And eventually I worked my way up in that trade to where I was running jobs. I was the lead man. I had people under me. I had my own apprentice. And what I realized was that that was it. 
I was, I don't know, maybe 23, 24. I had already reached the pinnacle of being an electrician. I was on a service truck. People work years to be on a service truck. And I'm like, really? This is it? This is my whole life? And I couldn't stand it. I couldn't do it. And had some things happen. My mom passed away and I started reflecting on my life Mm -hmm. and what my contribution was to the world. And I knew that I could not continue working as an electrician, working in those electrical rooms and digging ditches because my work really didn't help the world at all. Mm -hmm. And so I always realized that real estate would be a way out. And so I studied for a couple of years. Eventually, I just left my job took the real estate exam. Like I left my job on a Friday, took a real estate class at Tuesday. And two weeks later, I was a licensed real estate agent, something. (laughs) It was probably three weeks. I don't know. It was so long ago, but I did that so that I could learn real estate because I wanted to be an investor. So I could learn real estate while I was also having the ability to buy and sell or help people buy and sell. Mm -hmm. So I had that and the investment side that were two ways for me to make money. And it took me a little bit, but eventually I made a bunch of money. Eventually I lost all that money, <laughs> learned a lot of great lessons. And one of them was while driving in that car all the time, showing houses, looking at houses, all that commuting, all that time that I didn't have before was listening to podcasts. And back then you actually, I, I actually found it the other day. I have the old iPod that you have to plug <laughs> in, download and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I had one of those and I would load it up every day with new stuff and listen as I drove around. And it just intrigued me that shows like this show, shows like you, you mentioned, Ben Settle, Doberman Dan, these guys are sharing this knowledge and the end user, the listener, if they apply that knowledge, they become more powerful. Yeah. They become yeah. smarter, more efficient. And so that idea was always in the back of my head. So when I got online and I was doing the online thing along with my real estate thing. Everybody was talking about thought leadership and you gotta, you gotta blog to be a thought leader and all this stuff. And I'm like, (laughs) gosh, I hate blogging. I hate writing. I can't do it. And I decided to go into podcasting. I've been podcasting since 2009, failed miserably for the first three years. I should have quit, but I was too dumb to. And then eventually in 2013, had my first big hit, Making Agents Rich. We did over $101,000 that first year. And that set me up to start funding other shows and building the podcast factory as anyone today would know it. Yeah. Mm. Awesome. So awesome. Let's, you just jumped, uh, I'm sure Leon's going to jump in. Let me just, because you just quickly tweaked my interest there. The first show, which was Agents, which was this a specific show around the real estate arena. And, and you just mentioned the figure of a hundred thousand. Was that like 100,000, like you, you made revenues off that? How, 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 just, just elaborate on that, Jonathan. Yeah. So let's just go back a little bit. I, I've been podcasting, like I said, since 2009. And mm-hmm. my first show was the Real Tech Guy radio show, which since I had experience in real estate, it was geared towards real estate, marketing, training, that kind of thing. And my position yeah. to be different was I was the only guy podcasting while everybody else is blogging. Mm. And so that was my point of cool. difference. Around that same time, I, I was also learning about Facebook And I created something called the Real Estate Referral Group. This group, it was actually a fan page, but I thought group was a nice name for it back before (laughs) that. (laughs) Facebook, your money, Zuck. Uh, But but I created this fan page that was because I was doing pay-per-click marketing. I was getting leads outside of my area, and I didn't know what to do with them. And I figured, well, on Facebook, at least I could look up people a little bit and see what they were like before I sent them a referral. That was Mm. a premise. The group blew up, I think. Before I shut it down, like two years ago, it was up to 75,000 members, and then I squashed it. But I spent all that time in real estate training, so real estate marketing, getting listings, getting referrals, all that stuff was just my knowledge transferred over. I partnered up with my man, Darren Persinger, and we did the Making Agents Rich show. And so what we were able to do there was we already had email lists. We already had our own businesses, and we were doing a coaching program together. And we kept hearing this problem that agents were having. In fact, the problem has resurfaced again, where there was a shortage of inventory. There was not enough houses for sale. And they they were all working with buyers and they were getting outbid. So Mm -hmm. we're like, let's create a system for you to get listings. And we invented the seller getter was the name of our system. And Mm -hmm. that first year in business, we sold different iterations of the seller getter. It started out just being 
four web classes and some handouts. <laughs> Next iteration was four web classes, some handouts, membership area. Next iteration was the handouts, the membership area, then we're doing software for them. And we just kept making iterations. And in that first year, we had 101000 I think, $362 in revenue. And that was the first time I actually succeeded with podcasting where I wasn't throwing away my life and my money. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Awesome. Fantastic. <laughs> I think, you know, what's really cool, um, just going through the story as well, it just goes to show it's like you did the work constantly. You were doing the work. And, you know, it, it's no different to, to any entrepreneur who's actually managed to get results and, and see it through. It's kind of, you said, you know, back in um, 2009, was it when you did your first podcast? Yeah. yeah. And as you, as you eloquently put it, you were too stupid enough to quit. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, what? I can agree with that because we've been there, haven't we, Rob, where we just, yeah. we just keep going. We know something's missing, but we keep going. <laughs> <laughs> and and it is one of the common traits and i i think it's it, it's all to do with like are you going to like dig in and make it happen no matter what until you figure out what that thing is and and at that point you can then make the pivot or you can make the change because now your awareness is at that place and you know everything has led you to that point is really cool which kind of leads me to the next question jonathan i want to really touch on podcasting now because <clears throat> obviously you've been doing it for some time and you're you're well experienced you've worked with some great people and you've got the podcast factory you know you know the ins and outs of what's going on mm -hmm. for podcasts and what they offer to people and what i'd really like to to find out from your perspective is could you take us through maybe probably some of the key things people do need to look out for and avoid when it comes to podcasting um, and maybe there's like a failure that you've come across or something that went really bad that would be good for people to know and just to know how you come out the other side. Yeah, I love that. And if, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but listeners here today are probably coaches, consultants and the like. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And so here's one that just came up the other day. So you won't find any pricing on my website. You won't find anything. I have a certain system to bring people in, fed them. It's kind of the preeminence type of thing. They need to know who I am before they get on a phone call with yeah, me. Yeah. And so I take them through a process before we can ever talk about that. That's why I don't have that stuff on there. So anyways, I say that my main gig today is helping my hosts get more clients using direct response podcasting. Okay. And you guys are familiar with direct response. That's why you're listening to the shows that you listen to. And that's why you do the work that you do. You guys know that you build funnels, you do all that kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you're quite, quite familiar with this. Now, here is the big one. And I had this the other day and I wanted to just reach through the phone and choke the guy. In fact, <laughs> I hung up with him very quickly after that. So we go through the whole sales call. It's a damn hour sales call because he's got a lot of questions. Fine, I'm good with that. That's why we carve out the time to do it. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, he starts talking to me about John Lee Dumas. I'm like, what, what about him? Why are you talking to me about him? He's like, yeah, but he makes $500,000 a month getting sponsors. And I said, why are you talking to me? I told you from the beginning that I do direct response podcasting, meaning I help you sell your stuff. Mm -hmm. So what are you talking to me about sponsorships? What are you talking to me about any of that other stuff? And I see that all the time. They get all enamored with these guys and they see these big yeah. numbers and they think, oh, sponsors is going to be the way to make money. Sponsors is going to be the way to go broke, okay? Because if you're not selling your stuff, and you're starting a podcast to sell your stuff, your coaching, your consulting, your funnel building, whatever. Mm -hmm. What the hell does a sponsor have to do with that? Zero. Yeah. Zero. I tell people, the best sponsor for your show is you. What do you mean me? I'm, a, I'm, I'm already paying for it. Hell yeah, you're paying for it in money. You're paying for it in time. Mm -hmm. So why aren't you getting the end result, the buyer? Mm -hmm. What about the buyer? And these people think that Getting sponsors is a way to make money with a podcast. And in fact, a podcast is infinitely more valuable if you want to get clients. And I can tell you from my own experience, done it over and over and over again. Sponsors going to pay you maybe 15 cents, maybe 25 cents per thousand downloads. Mm -hmm. Go look at your numbers, people. You're not going to be able to support this. So you might make 30 bucks on a show, all right? The way that we did it when we started the Making Agents Rich show, after that first year in business, we were averaging like a buck, a buck oh five per download. A what? 
the sponsors don't even come close to that because we were selling our own product. Mm. And so the way I see the podcast is a way uh, to build that preeminence that we talked about. Mm -hmm. It's a way to say, all right, you don't know me, maybe. You're not ready to buy, maybe. You want to do your research. Go listen to the show. Go pre-qualify yourself. And when you're good and ready, come looking for me. Maybe I'll be available. And that's the way I set everything up. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I, I think, yeah, I think that's a great answer. And we, we use something similar, like you're talking about the preeminence. We, we use something called an impact accelerator. So it accelerates your impact and therefore the trust with obviously your customer. So, you know, I totally get where you're coming from. And this is a big thing that we've covered, especially over the past six months. Isn't that right, Rob? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and just before, before you jump in there, Rob, yeah. I would say it's absolutely crucial. And I'm, I'm glad you've touched on that because it's something we've looked at in the past where we've done events and we're like, should we look at sponsors? And actually the key thing with anything, you know, whether you're doing a podcast or events or whatever, is that actually you need to be at a place where you've got your stuff selling first. And I, I, I'm glad that you've picked that up, Jonathan, because it is a crucial point. And it's almost like the, the uh, magpie syndrome where you start seeing the shiny penny and like, oh, let's try that because they're doing that. Mm, mm. <laughs> what was you going to say, Rob? No, no. I mean, I'm so glad that, I mean, that was so, what, what I wanted the Elevation Nation to pick up on there is how, you know, Jonathan talked about preeminence and, you know, we might call that power positioning mm -hmm. as UKers, Elevation Nation. But I mean, just listen, I mean, I want you to listen to this intently, how Jonathan, you know, positioned himself against John Lee Dumas. And, and you know, people just don't get John Lee Dumas offering, him, you know, it's just crazy, but Jonathan was very, very specific when he said, I use direct response methods. And some people, I think they have a hearing impediment. <laughs> and I'm just, Elevation Nation, you know I'm a bit cheeky. I want you to take this in. We've talked about this on other shows and probably in some of the content we put out in, in our Facebook group about the, you know, the, the significance of picking a niche, mm. being very specific, you know, be a bit polarizing and making sure that you really get understand certain things in your marketplace. And Jonathan eloquently put that there. Where I want to move it to now, though, is, is Jonathan, how did you, because obviously, how did you reach out and create this, I, I, I call it a podcast, an empire on the production side. Like, <laughs> tell us a few stories about how you, you, you probably, how you reached out to Ben, how, how, how you started moving with these A-game players in the direct response world and say, hey, you should have a show. Let's explain how that plays out so maybe our audience can take some nuggets from there. Yeah, that's a, a great place to go because that's actually how you elevate. And so we talked earlier about me being an electrician, working with a journeyman and apprenticing up to where I was yeah. able to take up jobs. And so that's how it works anywhere. And you got to realize that you're only going to get to a certain level with your programming. All of us, no matter what we get programmed, there is a certain threshold that you will hit and you won't be able to break through that unless you get outside help. And I know that's why people hire you. That's yeah. why people want to work with me. That's why people work with all the guys on, on the network is because they got to a certain point. They see that guy up there and, oh, man, how do I get up there? Well, you apprentice, you figure it out, you get close to these people. And so what I'll do is, all right, it's fine. I'll share. I'll get <laughs> you could see you processing there. Like, oh, hey, 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 how much can I get catch this? Because <laughs> normally, you know, Jonathan and most of the people, especially Ben, they don't do too much hard teaching. This is about as yeah. good as it's going to get for free. So, <laughs> so it goes back to my mantra you work. And it simply goes like this. I did work with Darren before we ever had the show, before we ever did Making Agents Rich. I caught his attention because I would do work when he would teach me something because Darren mentored me, helped me with my real estate business. He talked about it in my intro, four hours a week. Well, here is something that people may not want to hear. I don't actually work four hours a week on my real estate business, usually way less than that. It might be a half hour a week. It might be, it might be no hours a week because I got people on the ground. I got teams, I got systems and processes all in place to get that work done. Mm -hmm. And so Darren helped me out with that a ton. I learned a bunch of, like I, I learned what I was lacking because he could see it and I couldn't. 
And that's what it is about getting mentors is they've been through a path that you may not have been through yet and they can guide you. And if you can learn from their mistakes, you're going to be in good shape. Mm -hmm. So we did that show. We did the Making Agents Rich show, did real good. I didn't need the income from that show because I already had my real estate business going. So I was incubating this thing. And so at the end of the year, I had extra money left. And I'm thinking, like an investor, what can I do to grow this money? Mm -hmm. And I saw Ben put out an email, like a New Year's email. This year, I'm growing my audience and I'm expanding El Bembo's reach and all that stuff. I, I want to do a podcast. And I'm like, oh, I email him back. I got you. And he's like, yeah, all right, let's do this. And the reason why is because two years before that, I was learning from Ben. I would give Ben testimonials. I would tell him his stuff worked. And I even offered to do some projects for him just so that I could be next to him. Mm -hmm. And he was cool because I never asked him for anything. I didn't, you know, I was just happy that he was helping me. I was trying to give back. And this has been my model for every one of them. Talk to any of the guys and they'll tell you that this is the way I operate. Mm -hmm. And so I helped him. Didn't expect anything in return. When it came up that he wanted to do a podcast, I said, I got you, man. And he knew my work ethic already. He knew there'd be no problem. So he's like, let's do this. And so Ben and I have been podcasting over three years already. Mm -hmm. Same with Doberman Dan, like two years. And I did the same thing with Dan. I learned some stuff about direct mail. I applied it in my real estate business. Then I came back and told Dan, dude, that tip that you gave in the show, man, I, I did 45,000 in renewals. And he's like, what? I'm not charging enough for my stuff. <laughs> but I got his attention and he mm -hmm. wanted to work with me, right? When that came up, because I was saying, you are the real deal. Mm -hmm. I respect you. I do what you say. And I want to bring you to more people because we talked about that end user that's benefiting. Mm -hmm. I know these guys can benefit the end users. So I'm happy to help them spread the word. So it's been the same. Everyone, any of these people, I've worked with them, done something, got their attention, and then just been right there ready to go when they're ready. <laughs> Fantastic. Absolutely. Fantastic. You know, that give us game mentality, you, you know, you, know, you got to go out there first, guys. That, I mean, that's hard teaching, but really it should be common sense. Mm. You know, you got to give, you got you to you gotta show up with your work ethic. You got to give, you got to show some value, show a little bit of love and be there when the client's ready. And it's all systems go, take yeah. action. So yeah, Jonathan, absolutely. that was it. That was great. So glad that you shared. Who are the other, because I'm, I'm familiar with Dan Meredith. I'm, I'm familiar with Ben. I'm, I'm familiar with obviously Doberman Dan, who are the other shows just in case maybe some of our listeners want to tune into some of those other shows. What, what are they about? Or are they, if you just want to elaborate on those as well, I'm happy. Real quickly, Yeah. I'll go down the list and I'm moving away from the mic. Somebody's going to be <laughs> mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> so if you go to our website, the podcast you'll yeah. see them. But yeah, Ben settle. I co-host sat with him, the Ben settle.com podcast. And that's all email marketing, direct response, salesmanship. Dan Meredith is more, inspirational, I would mm -hmm. say. Um, but he still talks some business nuggets and stuff like that. Off the chain with Doberman Dan has morphed because this is what happens. If you're in podcasting long enough, you will have to make some changes as you yeah. grow, as you get more into it. So Doberman Dan, now we're talking more about mental game, inner game and stuff like that. Then you go to somebody like Igor Kfetz at List Building Lifestyle, and he's talking strictly about generating leads getting email addresses, making sales. I co-host that show too. But uh, let's see, who else is good on here? I like a lot of these guys, but I'll, I'll just give one endorsement to my new favorites. <laughs> Got to look over my shoulder, make sure I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> my new favorites right now are the smartest guys in marketing. Mm -hmm. And I just like the way that they elevate the game. Like mm -hmm. they're talking at a much higher level than most of the people that I know talk. And so I find that very refreshing, very interesting, and I'm totally into it. Awesome. Cool. Thanks for sharing that. Jonathan, I've got a question because like, obviously you mentioned some really cool things. And I think the big one is obviously the, the direct response element of podcasting and, and realistically how businesses can you know put a podcast together. That's going to add real benefit to their bottom line, which I think, you know, in, in many senses of podcasts, people don't even consider that when they first get started. And I think you've kind of, you've given them the head start by going down that direction. But I've got a question, which is, what's the big thing around podcasting that our community, Elevation Nation, should ultimately be aware of right now? Yeah. So I had this discussion this morning with somebody who has 
flaming blue hair. See, and this I'm not Sorry, making. This I'm up. lacking there. I'm lacking. One, yeah, you know, one of these social media people, right? <laughs> I gotta have blue hair. <laughs> anyway, let, let let me not go down that road, but. She was asking a question in a group, and it was a group that I'm a part of, active in. And she's like, oh, I'm so funny. I'm damn funny, and I need to have a podcast after 80 people told me how funny I am. Her family told her how funny she is. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, they're like, you're funny. Stupid funny, but whatever, right? <laughs> Anyways, she's like, I don't oh, yeah. know who you're I talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm, you're in that group. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just clocked it as you said the hair now. And yeah, she, I, I changed the color of the hair so that to throw people off the scent. But yeah, yeah, I've pulled the scent. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so she's she's talking about all this stuff, and I gave her tip. I said, "Look, you're going to go online. You're going to do research. You're going to find courses. You're going to find blog posts. You're going to find podcasts about podcasting." She wants to know where to start, and I said, "All that stuff is really just going to distract you from the number one thing." And for instance, when we started talking pre-interview, the first thing I asked you about was who your audience is. Mm -hmm. Tell me about Elevation Nation. I want to know who we're speaking to so that we can make sure we get our signal clear. Mm. Mm. And so that's what I told her. I told her, look, forget all the other stuff. It's going to take you down paths you don't want to go down. What you need to focus on is your market. Yeah. Think about their pains. Think about their needs, their wants, their desires, what they hate, what they fear, all that stuff. Get into the emotion of your market. And then if you want, you can get two tin cans and a piece of string between them and record it with a set recorder, and they'll still listen, right? Because you're talking to them in their language, in their pains. Mm -hmm. So focus first on your market. And so what I do is I PM during, I'm like, hopefully that answer was helpful. If there's anything else, hit me up, let me know. And she, she tells me something about how funny she is again. Great. And then, and then I'm like, listen, who, who's, what are you marketing with your podcast? Because she's thinking about doing the work. You guys know how much work it takes to yep, start a yep. podcast. And to start it, all that work, all that momentum is for nothing if you can't keep the consistency. Correct. So I asked her, what are you promoting with your podcast? Promoting? It's a comedy show. I'm like, you're a comedy show. Bye. <laughs> right? Because... These people are thinking like, I'm just going to go talk and it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. And maybe sponsors will, will rain yeah. money on me and all that stuff. No, it's not that it's you talking to your market, getting your message clear and building a bridge from your markets, pain, loss, fear, desire to your product, mm -hmm. build the bridge. The podcast is a bridge for that. Mm. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I, and I think, um, <laughs> You know, from, from that respect, I think Russell Brunson calls it an epiphany bridge. <laughs> and you know what, guys? It's really powerful because what Jonathan is, is actually talking about is just because you move from whatever marketing you're doing online, offline, and now all of a sudden you're thinking about podcasting, it's kind of the message that you're putting out there and therefore the solution that you're going to provide to their pain or passion has still got to be there. It's still got to be the number one driver. And I, I think this is a conversation that I have with our customers as well. And, and me and Rob have this. It's kind of like people think like, because I need to put so much value out there first, I shouldn't mention the offer. And I'm like, the value you put out there is so powerful that you must put the offer out there as well. And it's not like the offer is going to be the main thing. The value is, but ultimately you've got to leave them that kind of, you know, place to go next. And just like you say, and then they can start to apply and figure out if they're right for you or not. And I think it's a really powerful strategic tip you've given us there so thank you for that jonathan mm -hmm. elevation if, if you've got a burning case of hemorrhoids and you don't know what the hell you're going to do and you go to the walgreens to to get some hemorrhoid cream and they say no 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 let me educate you on this hemorrhoids. you know right you're gonna be like no i just need some cream <laughs> and that's what i feel like people doing without making their offers mm. they're highlighting this they're they're trying to give value but they're not giving the last piece, the connection yeah. of how do you solve this problem? I can help you solve this problem. Absolutely. Don't be shy to sell. It's your damn job and you're being selfish if you're not doing it. Cool. Thank you. Rob, over to you. Yeah. I know I know we're getting close <laughs> to, to wrapping up, but I'm sure you've got one or two questions yeah, you want to drop. I, I, 
Um, I don't know if this might be applicable. Or maybe Jonathan's got a URL. So this is like a double barrel question, Jonathan. Um, one would be what great book audio resource would you recommend Elevation Nation probably listen out to that has impacted you? And then maybe touch on if you, ha- you may have a specific link that talks about podcasting resources or things they might need like a mic or some of the, you know, some of the things that they might want to consider uh, if they're going to start their own podcast. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't read much. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say there. No, but I'll tell you what, there's one that, that I am, uh, that I just got from some friends that I found interesting. They sent it to me and I read it uh, last weekend. It's called Relentless and I'm looking around. Let's see. I don't, I don't have it right here in front of me, but look it up, Relentless. And it's about this uh, like trainer who works with some really high level people. Like he worked with Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And what he has found is that the mental game is equally as, or more important than the physical game. Mm -hmm. And so in order for you to accomplish your goals, in order for you to make your name in the world, you have to be relentless and look, not everybody is cut out to be that way. That's okay. You can come work for me. You can come work for (laughs) me. That's, can be our employee. We're cool with that. But if you really have that drive and you really have that mission, nothing can get in the way. Nothing can stop you. You have to be relentless. Mm-hmm. So pick up that book. As far as me, I would recommend getting mentored by my mentors. Just go to the podcastfactory.com. Mm-hmm. The front page has a bunch of different shows. That will be your first stop. And if something catches your interest, listen to one, five, ten episodes and then buy our stuff. <laughs> direct response this get in there buy our stuff yeah <laughs> don't hide away from it this, this, this guy's already got the title of king of podcasting so of course he's going to give you that hemorrhoid cream <laughs> <laughs> that people will remember that one <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's awesome rob did you want to throw in them extra questions i'm not yeah, I, I, how, I, long, just, how, how long have we got just so i know I, I, I don't know how long we've been, how long we've been flying. I ain't got a clue. I yeah. ain't got a how, how much more time we got, Jonathan? Just so I know, because I don't want to. That's seventeen minutes before my next appointment. Okay, cool. So we got about yeah. five more minutes. So we don't want to leave him right to the end, you know. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Go we'll throw him on. We'll throw him on curveball because it's always interesting, and it's going to be interesting to hear it from Jonathan, the producer, King of Podcasting's perspective, because he's interviewed so many people and he sits on so many different podcasts. So, Jonathan, what I was going to say, if you could. Um, have a dinner party with three guests living or deceased who would they be and why okay so i am not that fancy i'd probably just have dinner with my uh, wife my son (laughs) but let's see like i'll tell you who i would like at my dinner party i would like all of my show hosts Mm -hmm. to come Right, because I would like to have them all together in a room and listen to them <laughs> talking to each other. And this is something that we're working on. Okay. That, uh, yeah, I'm trying to get everybody together in a room because I believe. Oh, what man! I, I have so many books I can't even remember the names of them. Mm-hmm. But anyways, by bringing these types of people together, the conversations that they have elevate your game. Mm-hmm. And so I love to listen in on conversations. Clearly, I love to be involved in podcasting, but bringing the people that I work with together so that I can learn them better would give me the power to help more people just like them, Mm -hmm. which is kind of selfish. And, you know, I'm okay with that. (laughs) (laughs) Great. Great. We're going to have that podcast VIP dinner coming very soon. Yeah. There you go. (laughs) Cool. So Jonathan, I just want to say, you know, thank you for taking the time out for this interview with our Elevation Nation there along with us. Really appreciate it. Now, I know you've already mentioned the website, your web address of how people can get in touch with you. Could you please just mention it again, just so we've got it clearly? And, you know, is there a social media platform that you use most out of, you know, all the ones that are available? That is a good question, because for a while I was not using social media because my hair is not blue or any other color. It's black. (laughs) Uh, But but yeah, so I've been actually very active on Facebook lately. And so the best thing to do is go to the podcastfactory.com forward slash J R Rivera. 
shoot me a friend request. Tell me you heard me on here. Tell me you need hemorrhoid cream. I don't care. <laughs> That's where you find me. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that, Robert. <laughs> the All right. So we're wrapping up Elevation Nation. I mean, there's been some uh, real nuggets, gemstones dropped by the king of podcasting, Jonathan Rivera. So once again, I want you, you know, Elevation Nation, thank you for listening. It's through your support and, you know, continued support and cheerleading that we bring great guests like Jonathan to the show. So what I'd ask you to do is basically just leave us a, a five-star review on either iTunes or Stitcher or just hit us up in the group, come back with any questions, whatever, whatever that may be. Um, but we're very grateful for you listening. We're very grateful for having somebody like Jonathan. It's great to actually have him be just do a whole show because normally we only hear snippets of Jonathan because he's like the riding shotgun as a host. But, you know, he's got so much wisdom as you can attest to when you listen to this show today. So, you know, as tradition with our show, we like to have a, a, a final word. I think I done the final word the last show. The you answer. Did, Rob, I'm giving you, did. you the floor. I'm giving you the floor to uh, wrap us up and take us away today. You know what? I want to hand. I want to hand it over to our guest. Actually, okay. On purpose because like we we do this every now and again. Like we fight over the final word. But you know what, Jonathan? Because you've been on so many shows, I would like to leave the final word for you as a a student and a master of direct response. I would like to hand over the final words from you to our Elevation Nation on Business on the Elevation podcast. What an honor. I get the final word. So, all right. I would say that Elevation Nation, above all else, is listen to these guys. Listen to Leon Robin. That's number one importance. And number two is take action. So it's fine that you heard stuff here. It's fine that you've heard stuff on other shows. The thing is that hearing it is not enough. Taking the action, whether it's perfect or imperfect, will get you closer to your results. And every step you take will get you leaps and bounds, multiplying in the future, step after step after step, you'll be jumping in progress. Hopefully that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. So as tradition, the final word was with Jonathan. So Elevation Nation, keep executing, keep elevating, and keep evolutionizing your business until next time. Absolutely. And that's a wrap, guys. Thank you very much, Jonathan. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, JR. Until next time, Elevation Nation, visit www.businessownerelevation.com and keep soaring to new and higher heights of productivity and profitability.